Hello friends, and welcome back to something different actually today. We're going to be ranking the Tottenham summer signings uh, from this past summer. We're in the January transfer window. About half the season has passed, a little bit less than that, I believe. But anyways, I thought this would be a good time to evaluate our summer signings because we've had a little bit of a good time to evaluate them, and uh, we got a few of them. So we have Carlos Vinicius, Gareth Bale, Joe Hart, Matt Doherty, Hoybier, and Reggion. Okay, so I'm very excited for this one. And before you ask, uh, yes, the FIFA career mode with PSG is going to be coming soon, but um, I, I'm just still getting stuff set up for that. It will be next Monday. I want to start it at the top of a week, and then we can have a consistent schedule from there. Sound good? Sound good? Okay, wonderful. And let's get into this. Carlos Vinicius. All right. Carlos, I think, has been largely good when he's played. I think, you know, if anything, the criticism is he needs more game time. I'm going to put him in good. I think he is a good player. I really do. Um, I think he's going to be um, good going forward. I'm not sure long term what the what the real uh, ideal with him is because I can't really see us purchasing him for that amount of money uh, when, you know, there's cheaper striker, strikers on the market you would think would also do a job. And we also have Troy Parrott coming through who, you know, isn't really performing on loan. But anyways, he's highly rated. Carlos Vinicius, I think, he has like at least two goals and two assists in uh, four or so Europa League appearances, I want to say. Um, I think he's been good. I think he provides a threat in the box. Um, and I think he can work with Harry Kane, which is important. And I think he does take a little bit of a load off of Harry Kane if Jose Mourinho is willing to use him in that way and is not scared of taking Kane off and potentially not having him there. Um, I think, yeah, if anything, we need to trust him with more game time. And I think, uh, yeah, no, we just need to trust him with a bit more game time, see what he's about a bit more. It's kind of hard to determine just how good he is, but every time I've seen him, I've been really happy with him. Okay, Gareth Bale. This is the big one, right? This is a uh, this is the big one because it's Gareth Bale, and you would expect uh, more, I guess, from Gareth Bale. But you know, right now, typically he's out injured, and. Uh, you know, that's kind of feeding the narrative that it was kind of a stupid move on Tottenham's part. I, you know, I don't know. Yes, he took a little bit of time to get up to speed. Um, and once he was in speed, in the flow of the game, he got injured. So uh, that's hard to really cope with. I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to say it's been good. Um, I don't think... I really don't think he's necessarily been bad either. He's actually scored some important goals for us. I think it was uh, that header um, in the Premier League uh, to guess a result. And then uh, scored in the, I want to say the Europa League. Or and maybe it was the FA Cup. Yeah, so yeah, no, I think he's not been as terrible of as people are making out. He's definitely not been himself, definitely not been the enigma um, that we know Gareth Bell could be. And, you know, all the stuff floating around of, oh, look, Kane, Son, Bale. That's the third person in that partnership. That's kind of been ruined recently. Um, but I still think Gareth Bale, great player. Um, his The potential for him to do well at Tottenham is still there. I don't think it's a lost cause. I don't think he's a lost cause. I think he's been really unlucky. Do I put him in meh? I think that's a bit generous. He's been a bit bad on the whole of things. I know I've just been kind of defending him, but still, he's on a lot of wages. He's on the same wages as Harry Kane, pretty much. You want to see more. Anyways, Joe Hart. Um, wow. Um, so I get why, I get why we got Joe Hart, you know? We have a homegrown problem at Tottenham. He was free, 
um, low wages, really, um, and he was a good keeper. Not really filled me with confidence every time I've seen him, though, I have to say. He's been very... Uh, I just don't feel safe with him back there. There's been a few goals he's let in where I'm just like, uh, Hugo would be stopping that, Paulo Gazzaniga would be stopping that, which is the more important thing. And it's it's kind of upsetting. I really do wish at least we would trust Brandon Austin or Alfie Whiteman or someone. Hopefully they have a little bit of potential uh, to step into that role. I just... I I... I don't know. I can see how he's a presence in the dressing room, and I can see why Jose likes his personality as a goalkeeper, Mr. Shouty Shouty. But just not a great goalkeeper anymore, in my opinion. He has been bad. Oh, man. The <laughs> the first few have been hard. Matt Doherty. Okay, I love Matt Doherty, actually. I really do. I think he's a good player. Um... I think we haven't been utilizing him correctly. Uh, it, that's the main thing. I think he's a good player. I, I do. I think he has the potential to open things up in an offensive sense. Uh, he's a solid defender in my eyes. Um, I We haven't seen the best of Matt Doherty is what I'm getting at. I think there's still a player there that he doesn't really rely on his pace or his physic. No, he relies on his physicality, but he doesn't really rely on his pace to be a good fullback. And I think he's a very intelligent player, very unique fullback. And I want to see more of him, and I hope that he gets more of a run out in the first team. I know the red card, I know the penalties. I know he had a bad start, but he also had COVID, and I think he's had a bit of a rough time coming back from that. Uh, that's just an assumption, but anyways, I don't think he's been as bad as people have made out. Um, still, a bad signing right now, and that's just, that's for all of them. For right now, there are bad signings. For this moment in time, January 7th, 2021, bad signing. But I think, can he have the potential to move up here? Absolutely, and I hope to see him there. Pierre-Emil Hoybier, brilliant. No questions asked. Um, he is, as I said the other day, everything I like about this Jose Mourinho Tottenham team. He is just a runner. He's a warrior. He's a Viking. He's everything. He has good passing He's good at marking, he's good at tracking runners, he's good at cutting out balls, interceptions, he's good at progressing the ball, he's good at dribbling, he's a leader, he's the mentality of him is, I mean, yes, there's this whole debate about whether, you know, Tottenham really have the mentality to win trophies, to to be the hard guys, to be the whatever. And yes, I will agree that that was a thing under Pochettino. We were no longer pushovers. And you can see that in commentaries by Gary Neville, by Jamie Carragher, people saying Tottenham look different right now. They look like a team with passion. They're going to fight to the end. But when Poch was sacked, was that mentality there, I think it crumbled. I really do. After the Champions League final, I, I think that mentality th that Tottenham were no longer pushovers, I think it faded a little bit. And Pierre-Emil Hoybier has brought that back. Um, if there's someone I trust to be pushing to the 95th minute, if we're 3-0 down, it's him. And I think he inspires the teammates around him. He makes everyone else look better around him. I think he has been probably one of our top three, four players this year. Just an absolutely brilliant signing and someone we really need. And also seems like such a brilliant guy behind the scenes. Just a, an amazing character. I love him and I hope he keeps progressing. He's only 25, I believe. So, g God dang it. I love Pierre. Anyways. Sergio Reguilón, good signing. Okay, I, I mean, yes, very, very good player. Very good player. 
I would say, you know, he has definitely offered us way more going forward. I think he's contributed a large part to Sun's success this year. He's giving some the, the other defenders another person to mark to watch out for, another pacey attacker that's running in behind that you have to keep track of. Um, and he's brilliant. He really is. Delivery from crosses has been superb, even on its weak foot. His decision-making has been great. His pace tracking back has been great. Ben Davis just can't do that, and Ben Davis has his uses, and I think we're using him really well right now, by the way. But Sergio Reguilón just provides another dimension to the Tottenham attack and to the defense. We can push higher with Reguilón. We can um, we can change what our right back has been doing because of Reguilón, and we have another attacking outlet that takes the pressure off of Kane, Son, Bergvine, uh, and Dombley, etc. Um, and it also just stops us from going back to that uh, tactic of giving the ball a surge, let him cross it in, and, you know, be done with it. Um, that's no longer our attack, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, but yeah, no, Reguilón, again, a brilliant, brilliant player. There's more I want to see defensively from him, especially when we're sitting back a bit. Um, he does get a little bit hasty, you know, sometimes. He's a young guy, um, relatively. I mean, he's still older than a few of the guys in the team. But, um, no, he, he is a good, really great young fullback. Uh, probably one of the best left backs in the world, and I couldn't be happier to have him. The only reason I put him in good and not brilliant is because I still want to see a bit more defensively from him um, and better decision-making on the defensive side of things. And yeah, he's adjusting to Mourinho's play style. It's very obvious to see. But I th still think he is an absolutely brilliant player. And he is so key to the way Tottenham play now. Anything successful we do in offense, I think we can attribute to him when he's on the field. Um, and yeah, he yeah he's just a constant threat. And again, as I said, he's taking the pressure off of the other players. I do think he has contributed a little bit to Matt Doherty. That's just a side note. Um, Matt Doherty not really taking control of the pitch when he's come on is because if we have this very attacking left back in Reguillon who wants to bombard, who wants to cut in, etc., it kind of diminishes Matt Doherty's ability to do that because we're focusing on the left already. And that's a thing we'll have to wait and see what the future is there. But I, I do think, you know, there are two very wing back type players and Serge can fulfill a deeper role sometimes so I think that's why we've mainly been seeing Reguillon and Serge and also because Matt Doherty has been out and stuff but anyways yeah no those are our summer signings I think on the large whole of things pretty dang good um I I think you know without Hoybier this year don't know where we'd be uh, I think Carlos Vinicius, Gareth Bale, Reguillon, uh, everyone has contributed at least a little bit to our season. Um, you know what, uh, I'm going to move him down here. Anyways, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you're looking forward to the other content I'm going to be putting out. I will look at the transfer targets that we have. Uh, and yeah, no, I hope to see you guys soon. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys next time. See ya.